Imagine, the year is 1997. The month is July. You are Gianni Versace's guest at his home in Miami. You are swimming in his pool. It was just the other day when you were sauntering along Ocean Drive on the southernmost portion of Miami Beach. These are days you want to remember in vivid detail for the rest of your life. So, while here, floating along as if in a daydream in a wonderland, with warm water drops dripping down your face and neck, you reflect upon your arrival and all you have learned since you arrived. To your side, you see a portion of grass that leads to a low coral wall. On the other side is the brilliant white sand that leads out to the beach, with warm waves gently rolling in from the Atlantic Ocean. To your left are Miami's world-famous, small-scale, Art Deco-style hotels, many of which date back to the 1920s and 30s. From close up and afar, they all shine bright and beautiful under the white South Florida sunlight. When you reach the area near the northwest corner of 11th Street and Ocean Drive, you stop and see swaying palm trees, a white stucco wall, and portions of a black iron fence. The wall continues behind evergreen bushes and trees. Looking up, you see the only private residence on Ocean Drive. It is called the Casa Casuarina. As you likely know, the Casuarina is a variety of Australian pine. Legend has it that there was one standing on the site when this structure was envisioned in the late 1920s. The Casa Casuarina was built in 1930 by the architect, author and philanthropist Alden Freeman. He was born on May 25th 1862 in Cleveland, Ohio. He earned a Bachelor of Science degree from the New York University in 1882 and a Master of Science in Architecture in 1887. He was unmarried but had an adopted son. His name was Charles D. Bolton. Alden Freeman had a lot of money that he did not earn on his own. That was because his father, Joel Freeman, was treasurer of the Standard Oil Trust. The incredible fortune he inherited allowed him to become a well-known and well-respected philanthropist. Legend has it that he had a rather fertile fascination in everything associated with Christopher Columbus. In fact, there are amusing stories that from time to time Mr. Freeman used to dress up in costumes to look like the famous explorer. Mr. Freeman's intense interest even influenced the design of the Casa Casuarina, which is said to have been inspired by the Palazzo of Columbus's son. The Alcazar du Colón Santo Domingo was built in 1510 in what is now the Dominican Republic. From afar, there does not seem to be many, if any, similarities between the two structures whatsoever. But either way, the inspiration was there. Most of all, Mr. Freeman envisioned a bohemian enclave where he and his adopted son and other family members could live and where their friends could comfortably stay for extended periods of time. That explains why there were 24 suites in total. The price of construction was around $120,000. An additional $1 million was spent before it was completely finished. The downstairs courtyard was originally paved in keystone tile and the window sills were lined with beautiful blue cobalt ceramic tiles. Alden Freeman enjoyed his villa for less than a decade because after a prolonged illness he passed away at the Casa Casuarina on December the 29th 1937. Mr. Freeman's son soon sold the villa for $100,000 to a gentleman named Jacques Amsterdam, 
the new owner repurposed the Casa Casuarina into an apartment complex, turning each bedroom suite into a separate unit for different residents. He called it the Amsterdam Palazzo. At the time, one-room apartments were rented for $250 a month. Nearly half a century later, the Amsterdam Palazzo came into the ownership of an investor named Slim Cabelli. At that time, the Casa Casuarina was called the Christopher Columbus Apartments. And so for many years, the building remained as an apartment complex, surrounded by Art Deco buildings, as Miami Beach became more and more famous around the world. This was mainly attributable to the TV series Miami Vice, that began airing in 1984 and went off the air in 1990. Fast forward to 1992. Gianni Versace was on his way to Cuba and stopped for a day to visit his sister Donatella, his muse and critic, who was shooting a new advertising campaign with the photographer Bruce Weber. At the time, Miami Beach was a quiet beach town filled with aging snowbirds, and where, if one knew where to look, they could find a handful of modelling agencies, bars and nightclubs. Word has it that Gianni asked his cab driver to show him something fancy and fun about Miami. It's been said that Gianni felt the area was reminiscent of Saint-Tropez and Capri during the 1970s. At the time, Gianni's favourite residence was La Fontanelle, his villa located in Lake Como. Versace purchased the magnificent four-story villa and completely refurbished it at an incredible expense. It was there where he escaped the hustle and bustle of his work life in Milan and could find solitude where he could read and relax and spend time with good friends. Gianni Versace was determined to be the owner and caretaker and saviour of Casa Casuarina. It is here where he is determined to create something reminiscent of a three-story Italian palazzo. He desired to restore it to its former glory. So he purchased the 13,000 square foot, three-story villa for $2.9 million and set out to transform his aesthetic dreams into a glamorous reality and create his very own private oasis. Gianni Versace is an incredibly creative man who has chosen to live his incredible life and decorate his homes with passion. So he started writing down and sketching ideas for his South Beach Palazzo. He spoke with his brother Santo, an executive officer of the Versace Fashion Company, about securing the funds to pay for it all. Gianni Versace has spent his life making people's dreams come true. He envisioned his South Beach Palazzo to be an opulent fantasy world. He wanted the rooms to be theatrical, elaborate, astonishing and luxurious. At the same time, he wanted his South Beach Palazzo to be warm and highly personalised and radiating with the love that emanated from within his golden heart. That is why many of the fabrics used for the furniture and drapery were designed specially for the Casa Casuarina. It is quite comfortable to sit upon the upholstered furniture that are covered in quilted cotton velvet and fabric. Versace's life was his work, and his work was his life. There was no point of demarcation where one began and the other ended. So it was of no surprise that his label's signature Medusa head and Greeka pattern can be seen just about everywhere around his home. Interior designers were brought aboard to design stone and mosaic patterns for the floors, classic cabinetry, spectacular stained glass and splendid ceiling details, such as brilliant blue skies with delicate clouds and trompe l'oeil. 
The renovation crew began by removing walls and partitions that separated the two dozen apartment units. The new floor plan would include eight bedrooms, two kitchens, three sitting rooms, ten bathrooms, a bar, a library and four living rooms. Bedroom one was designed for Gianni Versace. It is located on the northeast corner of the top floor with windows overlooking the Atlantic Ocean. His balcony centers directly above the main entrance, overlooking the Ocean Drive and the beach. Bedroom two was designed for Gianni's boyfriend, Antonio D'Amico's room, which is located on the third floor, in close proximity to Gianni's. Bedroom three was built for Gianni's sister, Donatella. It is located on the southeast corner of the second floor, with windows overlooking the beach and the swimming pool. Bedroom 4 was designed for Gianni's brother, Santo. It is located on the northeast corner of the second floor, directly beneath Gianni's suite. Bedroom 5 was designed for Donatella's daughter, Allegra. It is located on the southwest side of the mansion, with doors leading to the courtyard and also connecting to a private vestibule leading to a staircase descending down to the pool. Bedroom 6 was designed for Donatella's son, Daniel. It is located on the northwest side of the second floor. Bedrooms 7 and 8 are located on the top floor and were built as guest rooms. Over the course of the year, Gianni was pleased with how his South Beach Palazzo was coming along but he was hoping to have more space to add a guest wing and a swimming pool. At the time, the Revere Hotel, located to the south of the building, was in a dilapidated state. No one quite knew what to do with it. It would cost a fortune for a developer to buy it and restore it. Some people who have been in there remember its magnificent Art Deco chrome sconces and chandeliers. But beyond that, because the Revere was built in 1950, it was considered a non-contributing historic building and was not protected from demolition. So in 1993, Versace bought the adjoining Revere Hotel for $3.7 million. After six months of deliberation, permission was finally granted to demolish it. Looking at the villa from here, you see the Mediterranean-style red roof. On the far left of the top floor, are a trio of round-headed windows above a series of doors that open out onto a balcony. That is Gianni's salon, where he spends considerable time working, reading and thinking. It is also connected to his media room and kitchen to the west. Though that room can be accessed from its own doors, there is also a secret door that connects it to Gianni's suite that takes up the entire northeast side of the top floor. The secret door is located within the room beyond the double doors that lead to the balcony directly above the entryway. The set of four windows to the right are for Gianni's dressing room. Beyond that is Gianni's bedroom. Directly below these windows are a set of square-headed windows and a set of doors that open out onto a balcony. That entire space is the sitting room of Gianni's brother, Santo. On the far left of the second floor, is a set of doors that open out onto a balcony and a set of three stained glass windows that match ones along the south facade of the building. This entire space is the sitting room of Gianni's sister, Donatella. On the far left side of the ground floor are the spectacular stained glass windows that allow sunlight to shine into Gianni's dining room. To enter the Casa Casuarina, one must begin by walking up the coquina steps that lead down to the sidewalk along Ocean Drive. The soft limestone of broken shells has often been used in road making in the Caribbean and Florida. On each side of the entry steps are large gold coloured pots where palm trees and evergreens thrive in the warmth and simmering sun. Each prominently display the head of Medusa, a Greek mythological figure the logo came from the floor of ruins in the area of Reggio Calabria that the Versace siblings played in as children. At first blush, it seems to be an unusual choice for Gianni to choose for his company's logo, because even though 
She was originally a ravishingly beautiful maiden and drew the attention of Poseidon. It was an enraged Athena who transformed Medusa's beautiful hair to serpents and made her face so terrible to behold that the mere sight of it would turn onlookers to stone. At closer consideration, however, one learns that Versace was inspired by the pre-monster Medusa, who symbolizes power, strength, and beauty. The logo's head is encircled by a ring of Greek keys. This is less symbolic, but represents the labyrinth from the story of Theseus and the Minotaur in Greek mythology. Upon reaching the top of the steps and passing through massive iron gates, your eyes fall upon a bewitching bronze statue of a kneeling Aphrodite, the Greek goddess of love. It was Alden Freeman who commissioned Yugoslavian sculptor Vuk Vuknic to create it in 1928. The statue was originally located in the courtyard, but then moved to the front entrance. Legend has it that Gianni first saw this sensuous statue while walking along the sidewalk, and it was then that he saw the house and took a tour of the property. Looking up, you see the immense double doors made of wood, surrounded by a hefty frame of coral brought in from beneath the waves of the ocean off of South Florida. Looking down, you see the red river stones embedded into the space surrounding a colourful tile mosaic of geometric shapes. Looking up, you see a gate hovering above that seems as if it just may come crashing down in front of you. You step inside, past elegant black and gold gates, and into what appears to be a portico, but what is actually the central pedestrian entrance. To your left, you see what appears to be a broad, round piece of metal displayed upon the wall. In the centre is the image of Medusa. Perhaps this is the shield of Perseus, who beheaded Medusa and put it on his shield to protect him when he went into battle. Looking down, you see more colourful tiles. To your right is the back of an ascending staircase. Along the bottom are a series of faces carved in wood. Continuing forward, you step upon four steps until you reach the elevated platform with a mesmerizing multicolored mosaic on the floor. Looking left and right, you see arcades that lead to sets of carved wooden doors. Looking straight ahead, you see the captivating courtyard. It is a rare experience in the United States to enter a residential courtyard such as this. The layout is reminiscent of a traditional and stately Moroccan riad that were originally meant to represent the Garden of the Paradise, as imagined by the classical architects. The grand courtyard of the Casa Casuarina is very impressive. It is of enormous dimensions and climbs up to the clear blue Miami sky. Looking down and around you, you see fantastic mosaics stone tiles, and brickwork. Geometric symmetries abound in each and every direction. On the other side of the courtyard from where you are is a staircase that leads down towards a basement area with a door that opens to the alleyway to the west. Along all sides are a series of arches that lead to an inner corridor where massive wooden doors lead to an assortment of rooms. Black metal lanterns light the way in all directions. The arcades provide a sheltered walkway for pedestrians. They are located beyond a succession of continuous arches, with each arch supported by columns. On either side of the centre arches to the north and south stand four tall white pillars. They are called the Pillars of Democracy and were designed by Ulrich Henry Elahusen. These four pillars represent the four continents along with the four characters that Alden Freeman felt best represented each one. For Europe, he chose a depiction of Christopher Columbus. For Asia, he chose a depiction of Confucius. For Africa, he chose a depiction of Frederick Douglass, who was an American social reformer, abolitionist, orator, writer and statesman. And for America, he chose a depiction of Pocahontas 
who was a 16th century Native American woman, notable for her association with the colonial settlement at Jamestown, Virginia. On the north side of the courtyard, there is an exquisite corridor filled to the brim with intricate tiling, decorative figures, frescoes with mythological scenes, and magnificent mosaics. This whole space is truly spectacular. Turning around and looking up, you see a two-story high miniature replica of the Tower of Homage in the Dominican Republic. The top portion is made up of red brick with three round-headed windows framed in wood. This replica is another nod to Alden Freeman's fascination with Christopher Columbus. Because it was the 16th century structure where the great explorer was imprisoned before being brought back to Spain in chains. Turning back around and taking it all in, it is here and now where one really begins to appreciate the special environment that Gianni created. Looking around, you can just imagine Gianni's creative mind in motion. This is the theatrical stage he has often daydreamed about. It is here, at the Casa Casuarina, where he can devise elaborate geometric designs, patterns, and productions that would make legendary Hollywood choreographer Busby Berkeley proud. It is here where he can light and design the sets and write the scenes and fill them with the cast of creative characters that enlivened his life. It is here where you begin to be transported to another dimension and into the personal world that Gianni Versace has created. Along the second floor, are tall columns that divide banisters that alternate from solid cement to red bricks. Looking up above the centre arch along the west side is a cement planter filled with evergreens. Above that is a window with an iron mission bell dangling from its centre. This particular bell replaced the original one during Versace's renovations. It was made in Philadelphia in 1851. Looking further up, there is a third floor. The columns and banisters are all unpainted wood. Like the second floor, there are lanterns and round-headed windows and sets of wooden doors and exposed beams. Though they are not easy to see from here, along the perimeter of the top floor are square medallions with faces of historic figures. High above the courtyard, on the west side, can be seen an observatory of red brick with a metal dome on a rotating base. There is a long horizontal window for the telescope that no doubt offers fantastic views for observing terrestrial and celestial sights and events. Along all sides of the courtyard are carved wood doors that lead to rooms that are each their own wonderland. Each are adorned with all the alluring elements that affluence has to offer. Gianni's dining room is located on the southeast side of his South Beach Palazzo. Isn't it amazing? An intricate and varied assortment of light and dark coloured pebbles have been inlaid along all walls and arranged to form decorative and pictorial patterns. The whole scene harkens back to gorgeous grotto rooms from centuries past. This millennia-old art form is one of the few that has retained its ancient qualities in terms of method and technique and requires great experience and expertise. That is why Gianni hired Fontini Mosaici, a Milanese company established in the last century, to create this visual adventure and fantastic feast for the eyes that can be enjoyed while dining with friends and family. Looking up, you see that the ceiling has been hand-painted and sculpted down at the edges to make one feel as if they have entered the inside of a seashell. In fact, a large shell has been painted in the very centre above a glorious glass chandelier. Other shells and cherubs and flower garlands on the ceiling are trompe l'oeil, creating the optical illusion that the images are three-dimensional. Looking down, 
you see that in the centre of the room is a round mosaic consisting of white, yellow, red and black tiles with the face of Medusa in the centre. The dining room has east and south facing windows with stained glass. The room is entered and exited through a set of wood double doors. There is also a set of doors that lead in and out of the kitchen. Outside of the dining room are arcades that protect you from the elements as you follow them along to enter any of the rooms on the ground floor. In the centre of the south side of the mansion is a corridor of balanced proportions. It was furnished with modern reproductions of large antique ceramic vases that seem as if they could have been used in ancient Greece to carry water. Fabulous frescoes are reminiscent of Italian Renaissance paintings and can be found all over the Casa Casuarina. The two that one sees when passing from the courtyard to the south side are particularly fascinating. The technique from antiquity consists of mural paintings being executed upon freshly laid or wet lime plaster. The dry powder pigment merges with the plaster after the addition of water. With the setting of the plaster, the painting became an integral part of the wall where they were placed. On the other side of the corridor is an elevated deck that beckons to all who frequent fresh air and long for luxurious and luscious delights for leisure and languid retreats for relaxation. Indeed, it is a very tranquil environment. Since this area is the space where the Revere Hotel once stood, this is a completely new area that no previous owners of the Casa Casuarina have ever had the chance to enjoy. The deck has a rounded black iron balcony with golden Greek key and shell designs and a Medusa face in the centre. Looking down, you see that the vibrant geometric patterns transformed the entire floor into a beautiful surface. It is here where Gianni and his friends and family socialise and enjoy meals beneath the canopy. From this deck, are two winding stairs lined with tile designs that descend down to the magical mosaic garden. At the base of the stairs is a mosaic depiction of two mermen, the mythical male equivalents and counterparts of mermaids. In this design, their human parts, from the waist up, are made up of light beige coloured tiles, while their scaly fish tails are made up of white, grey and blue tiles. Stepping down from the low platform at the bottom of the stairs, you find yourself at the edge of the mosaic garden. There are four grassy areas where one can sit or lay directly upon it, or on large towels or blankets, or upon reclining chairs. The grassy spaces are framed by tile and pebble mosaics in the shape of circles, squares and triangles. In the centre is a design of a golden twisted rope framing Versace's famous Medusa face logo. To the south of the mosaic garden is what can only be described as one of the most dazzlingly designed swimming pools most people have ever seen. It is 54 feet in length from east to west. Looking down beneath the crystal clear aqueous surface can be seen what has been reported as over one million glimmering, shimmering mosaic tiles, many of which are 24 karat gold. This is an oasis. Legend has it that the mosaic tiles were inspired by Versace's marine Venita print seen on his silk scarves. Once again, the lines are blurred between Gianni's personal and professional pursuits. This is a breathtaking masterpiece. It is the ultimate theatrical set. 
one almost wonders if at any moment an elaborate choreographed musical production will begin with large numbers of spellbound showgirls swimming and splashing in a kaleidoscopic fantasy fashion. Shell motifs abound at the bottom of the pool, made up predominantly of twinkling tiles in blue and green, with splashes of red, yellow and gold. bikini-clad beauties could never distract from the depiction of the main character performing on this enchanting set. That would be Neptune, the god of the sea. He has taken his Olympian-worthy place at centre stage where all gods, goddesses, heroes and creatures can see him overseeing his divine domain. The south side of the swimming pool is both decorative and functional, in that it provides a privacy wall from pedestrians and vehicles along 11th Street on their way towards, or from, Ocean Drive. Just looking at it, you are taken in by the drama, exuberance and grandeur of it all. In the centre is an ornate pebble mosaic design. In the centre could be seen water emerging from the mouth of Neptune. The water spouts out and directly into the swimming pool. On either side are white Roman columns. Atop each one stands a specially designed vessel that are similar to the designs around them. On either side of those are magnificent mosaics of botanical filled vases. Further out, on either side are two other water fountains with cast stone faces of Neptune spouting out water into coral basins that spill their overflow into the pool. Along the top are ornate red, blue and white tiles arranged in geometrical shapes. The swimming pool is just what one would expect it to be a Gianni's sumptuous South Beach Palazzo. Around the edges of the pool are ornamental, figural urns, vessels and pots, some of which seem to have been transported from ancient French and Italian gardens. In fact, the large ornamental stone urns on pedestals were purchased from a 16th century palazzo. These large sculpted vases stand upon custom-made footed pedestals designed by Versace. With chromatic mosaics, polished tiles and veined marble. On the southeastern portion of the mosaic garden stands a poolside rotunda that offers respite from the heat and the tropical showers that suddenly begin and then end quickly as the billowy clouds and falling rain evaporate in the simmering sunshine. The large rug that is hanging on the wall was purchased by Versace and is framed in beautiful stone. 
The rug depicts the village of the gods welcoming home Aphrodite, the goddess of love. On the top right you can see the temple of the gods with Athena and Zeus as well as Poseidon who is sitting with his triton. The floor is a pattern of triangles and diamonds within circles around the shells and pearls in the center. It is rumored that the rotunda's floor contains a cryptic code. On the southwestern portion of the mosaic garden stands a 6,100 square foot, two-story guest wing. Interestingly, it is this new structure that more resembles the Alcazar de Colón Santo Domingo than the structure that Alden Freeman had built. On the lower level is an arcade that can be accessed from any of the four large arches. Between the arches are mosaics of palm trees against a white background. On the other side are double doors that lead to living spaces. Along the top floor are eight arches that are narrower than the ones below. Between each column are planters filled with evergreens. On the other side of the arcade are doors and windows for the guest rooms. At the southernmost portion of the building is a round tower that follows the shape and style of the rotunda on the other side of the pool. In fact, an exhilarating experience awaits all those who enter the ground floor of that space. Once those doors are opened, one is led into a sumptuous shower that can easily accommodate at least eight men at the same time. The whimsical round room is divided into four sections that are partitioned with marble walls about three feet high, each with picturesque round rope twist style marble columns. On the floor is a pretty mosaic designed with numerous geometrical shapes. The walls are decorated with magnificent marbles and tiles. Being here, it is like being in a genie's bottle. On the other side are matching double doors that lead into Gianni's private gym. Walking along the lower arcade, you look up and see the groin vaults have been hand-painted with palm leaves. On either side of the walkway are statuary of women's faces. To the left are wood and glass doors. Passing through to the other side is a spectacular staircase that twists right. Turn left and you will walk alongside pretty paintings in frames and birds that have been hand-painted upon the wall. Check out the tiled mosaics along the bottom of each step. They alternate in design and colour. On your way up, you view hand-painted tropical scenes with palm trees and a cloudy blue sky. Halfway up, you set your sights upon stunning panes of stained glass with colours of gold, green and blue. When you reach the top of the stairs, you will see a beautifully tiled platform that leads to an area surrounded by Corinthian columns, with three tall niches along the wall for assorted decorative vases and statuary. Looking up, you see a vaulted ceiling with hand-painted birds against a cloudy blue sky. It is at this time that it occurs to you that this was originally the southern façade of the original building, and that this door once led to a balcony. But now it leads into Allegra's room that can also be accessed from doors facing the courtyard. Passing through the double doors, you are now walking along the upper arcade. To your left are arches being held up by classical order of Corinthian columns with their decorative bell-shaped capital with volutes two rows of acanthus leaves, and an elaborate cornice. The floor is elegantly covered with black, white, red, gold, and grey tiles. Looking up, you see long plants of knotted wood and a row of black metal and glass lanterns. Looking east from the terrace, you can see down to the pool and mosaic garden. Looking up, you can see the sky above the Atlantic Ocean. On the top floor of the garden wing, is a sitting room with sofas and chairs along the walls that have romantic images hand-painted with vibrant colours. 
In the centre of the room is an oval overlook that allows you to see down into the room below. Looking up, you see a splendid skylight that emanates a soft, snowy white light. Doors along the south side of this room lead to the Mosaic Suite. It was specially designed for Madonna to stay in. In addition to the king-size bed, there is also a sitting area and desk. Legend has it that it is the only suite that has a bathtub because Madonna supposedly preferred baths to showers. There is another luxury guest suite on the north side of this hall where special guests of Gianni stay when visiting the Casa Casuarina. Returning to the courtyard in the original structure, you look up and you see where all the suites are that the residents of Casa Casuarina live. Four superb and sumptuous suites occupy the first floor above the entry courtyard. They are all accessed through double wooden doors in the arcades along the courtyard. Two staircases offer access to the residence. One is located beyond the entryway to the east, and the other is on the direct opposite side to the west. The staircase to the west also leads down towards doors that offer access to the alleyway and garage. Walking up the stairs offers many surprises, such as exquisite tiles, noble busts, enigmatic medallions, stunning stained glass, and sublime stone vases perched on the walls. Everything is different from everything else seen elsewhere, and quite a number of the surprises add to the mystical feel of the South Beach Palazzo that you have been fortunate enough to explore. Donatella's suite occupies roughly 1,500 square feet of the mansion. The suite is entered through a set of double doors on the southeast side of the second floor arcade. The built-in cabinets, window frames and carved wood along the walls are a gorgeous shade of green. The room offers views of Ocean Drive and the beach. To get to the bedroom, one must walk through a vestibule. Open the double doors and you will see a huge bed with a bronze headboard adorned with an intricate leaf-painted stencil pattern. The ceiling is painted like a floral trellis filled with a bed of gilded white and yellow roses. It was painted on canvas in Milan and made especially for her room. In fact, this space appears to be a pleasantly shady place under this rosy bower. Pink and yellow flowers on their vines have been painstakingly painted behind the bed. Embedded in the walls of the bedroom are four sprawling Biedermeier style closets. In the bathroom, Floral designs are wistfully painted upon the wall. Above the vestibule is a stunning gold chandelier. The Italian marble bathroom features an oversized shower with double head, double sink and bidet. Open up the set of stained glass doors and step out upon the balcony that directly overlooks the mosaic garden. On the northeast side of the South Beach Palazzo is the room created for Gianni's older brother. Santo's suite has a more masculine scheme look than the others. One enters it from double doors on the northeast side of the arcade facing the courtyard. Upon entering, you find yourself in a mahogany panelled sitting room that overlooks Ocean Drive and the beach. Santo's sitting room features custom Versace velvet upholstery. The suite's bathroom has white marble walls and a floor tiled in shades of gold and white. The suite for Donatella's son Daniel is located on the northwest side of the second floor. Upon entering, 
there is a small sitting room with two closets. The entire room is a wash in rich cream, pink and blue colours, with hand-painted designs and chimerical cherubs on the walls. The floors are covered with hard wood flooring. The stained glass windows to the side and behind the king-size bed obscure the views of the surrounding buildings. Alcove-style beds with elaborate sconces are located on each side of the doors leading to the beautiful bathroom. In the centre of the bathroom is a fanciful mosaic floor with the face of Medusa in the middle. What a wonderful suite for a child. It is the sort one would expect to find in a dreamy, wonderful wonderland. The suite for Donatella's daughter, Allegra, is located on the southwest side of the courtyard. The winsome suite is entered through two double doors with stained glass in shades of pink and purple. Upon entering, you find yourself in a sitting room with sofas, desks, and an ornate chandelier above. The room is predominantly pink and has hand-painted images of brightly plumed parrots, hummingbirds and doves decorating the walls. The stained glass windows behind the bed obscure the view of the buildings across the alleyway. On the right are two alcoves for sitting or sleeping. Between them is the entry to the bathroom. On the south side of the room is a doorway that leads to the terrace connecting to the guest wing. This is perhaps the most fascinating room, for it is festooned with all the fortunes a fairy tale in a fairy land has to offer. It is a pretty and pleasant space, where little girls such as Allegra can easily daydream while the sun shines, and serenely slip into their evening dreams as the silvery moon hovers over the tranquil skies of the Casa Casuarina. On the north side of the house is a set of double doors that open into a round foyer with doors to the left and right. Straight ahead is a sitting alcove. The windows are covered in stained glass. On the walls and ceilings are custom paintings that were specially made for this space. Passing through the double doors on the north side of the room, you enter a blissful sitting room with a bounty of gorgeous gold and blue satin coloured sofas. Further into the lavish suite, you see stained glass windows and a large bed surrounded by entrancing colourful columns, wizardly walls and sumptuous shutters that seem to be sprinkled with candy coloured stripes and hand painted flowers. Returning to the round foyer and opening the doors on the south side, you now enter Gianni's suite. The nearly 1,200 square foot suite takes up the entire northeast side of the third floor of the mansion. You enter a room designed with rounded corners. In the centre of the south side, between two radiant stained glass windows that let light shine in from the courtyard is a vintage mahogany bed. Directly across from the bed is a bay window that includes a sitting alcove with soft pillows. The walls have been hand-painted with classical murals of figures from antiquity in a tropical scene, from baseboard to cornice, complete with paintings of palm trees that make the relatively low ceiling seem higher than it really is. The ceiling has been hand-painted to depict a bright blue sky with puffy white clouds. Continuing to the next room, you enter Gianni's dressing area of unstained mahogany with ebony accents to showcase a portion of his valuable art collection. On the far left is a door leading to a balcony. The bathroom is clad of Italian marble and has gold, double-headed shower fixtures and a bidet. 
Turning right, you see numerous beautiful closets specially designed to store Gianni's beautiful clothes. In the next room is a sitting area with a balcony that offers a view of the Atlantic Ocean. It is here where Gianni often stands in his silky soft robes and lets the steamy air seep into his lungs and pores and soothe his spirit and senses. On the southeast corner of the top floor is a spellbinding space that Gianni uses as a private salon. It is accessed through a secret door that connects to Gianni's suite on the northeast side of the courtyard. This is the only room that Gianni did not completely redesign when he acquired the Casa Casuarina. He maintained its original faux gothic decor. Gianni did, however, had a marble floor by a local Miami craftsman. He also added 18th century mirrors from a Venetian palazzo. To the west is a vestibule that leads to Gianni's media room and a kitchen for his own use. Along the top floor, facing the courtyard, are whitewashed walls decorated with approximately 130 mostly disc-shaped portrait medallions of historic figures places and events that intrigued Alden Freeman. These include Jane Addams, Gandhi, Julius Caesar, Cleopatra, Benito Mussolini, John D. Rockefeller, and Russian revolutionary Vladimir Ulyanov, best known by his alias, Lenin. There is even a plaque dedicated to Florence Maybrick, author of my 15 lost years. Many of the medallions portray Freeman's personal friends and ancestors and celebrate their accomplishments. As one quickly learns, the Casa Casuarina is filled with all sorts of spectacular surprises and places where one can seek seclusion and inspiration. Perhaps the most exciting of which can be found by following the sheltered staircase up along the west side of the courtyard. After climbing past the top floor and to the rooftop, the staircase takes a sharp left. Looking along the bottom of the wall, you see magnificent Moroccan inlays. But don't look down for too long, because you want to be aware of the low slung ceiling above you as you see a hand-painted tile that has the word observatory upon it. Turn left again and follow the narrow staircase and it seems as if you are entering a genie's bottle. The ceiling around you is a deep navy blue and covered in glowing golden stars, creating the illusion of the heavens. The lower walls of the domed room are made of red brick. Along the perimeter is a curved bench where people can relax on blue cushions. The acoustics in this room are incredible. Along the centre of the dome is a vertical window where Gianni can direct his telescope in the evenings and observe the starry skies and the celestial splendours high up above the Casa Casuarina and Miami Beach and the entire Earth. But you don't need to be in the observatory or even have a telescope to do that, because you can easily walk down these steps, turn left or right and stroll upon the rooftop terraces. You can feel the flurry of the warm wafts of wind from the sunless sky above the ocean, as it streams high above the steaming sand and the breeze blows through the branches of the tilting trees that tantalize all those who pass along them on Ocean Drive. The draft travels along this towering roof and swirls in a whirlwind around you. It is upon the romantic rooftop retreat where visitors and residents can look up, just as you are doing right now, as you continue floating in the most luxurious pool you have ever seen or been in, 
and that is as beautiful as anything and everything around you that was ever imagined and created by the great and glamorous and absolutely brilliant Gianni Versace. Here at his South Beach Palazzo, known as the Casa Casuarina. <laughs>